Hi everyone, welcome to week four of the Better You in 2022 challenge. I hope you all are enjoying the challenge for one, but also seeing the benefits that are coming out of the challenge as well. And hopefully you are creating good habits that are, you know, hopefully being incorporated into your everyday lifestyle, even when the challenge is kind of over. Today, we're going to be talking about um, stress management and stress in general and kind of some ways that exercise, nutrition, and your overall wellness and lifestyle can help lower stress and kind of how stress affects each one of those in a different way as well. Before we jump into that, though, I kind of want to check your mood at the moment. So this is where we're going to jump in and get going for today. So let's jump in. Um, the first slide, how are you feeling today? I really want you to sit, kind of take a moment here and think how you are truly feeling. And I will pull up this screen next because these kind of give you some different emotions that maybe can help identify, you know, the current state that you're feeling. And, um, just kind of take this time to check in with yourself, kind of reflect because we are in week four. Um, there's only a few weeks left and Hopefully, you know, this challenge has kind of given you some good insight into hopefully helping you understand a way, ways to like manage your stress, controlling your emotions, and hopefully the habits that you're choosing through either it be the exercise one, the nutrition one, or the wellness one, hopefully they've kind of given you some peace of mind to reflect on how you truly are feeling within that moment in time. And you can kind of realize that hopefully the mood that you are feeling isn't affecting your stress levels too much. Or if you were stressed, hopefully these habits that you have kind of been practicing and working on have lowered the level of stress and kind of released more of those feel good hormones. Um, So yeah, hopefully this was just kind of a good insight and indicator to get you going and kind of really check in with yourself. So we're going to go ahead, excuse me, and jump into the overall topic of stress management today. So kind of how exercise, nutrition, and again, the overall wellness and lifestyle can lower stress. And we're going to kind of talk about stress in general um, to get going as well. So on to the next. This diagram here, we have two different pathways when it comes to our body on stress. We have a very fast acting pathway and a very slow acting pathway. Each one of these releases um, a different type of hormone. So if you're familiar with um, adrenaline or noradrenaline and then the cortisol and the um, aldose, oh my gosh, aldose serotonin, um, these kind of, uh, let's just say, get secreted depending on the type of pathway you are in and they affect your body in different ways with stress. So as you can see on the left slide, With the fast acting pathway, that's more of where you get that increased heart rate, um, the alertness, uh, all of this stuff that kind of make you get into more of a fast acting fight or flight um, kind of emotion. That's the stuff that you're going to see in the fast acting pathway, whereas the slow acting pathway happens over time. So with the more stress that your body impacts throughout, you know, days or weeks and so, And if you're just feeling stressed all the time, uh, the slow acting pathway is where you can kind of see increased um, levels of like inflammation in your digestive system, stuff like that, Um, increased insulin, suppressed immune system, function, you know, everything that you see on the right is kind of what happens. The thing is with stress is seven, here's a big statistic for you. Seven out of 10 adults in the United States say they experience stress or anxiety on the daily And then it obviously interferes with, you know, the moderate stuff that goes on in their life. And what we want to do is find ways to decrease the level of stress that is being released because we don't want all these, you know, types of secretions of cortisol and adrenaline going all throughout the body at all times because one, those are going to take away the impact of our feel-good hormones. And two, it's just going to result to bigger changes in the body that we don't necessarily want, like the inflammation and increased risk of certain cardiovascular diseases and whatnot. 
those are things we don't want to see when we have too much cortisol and too much, obviously, stress within our bodies at all times. So there are ways to eliminate and manage stress. And most of the things that I'm going to list today are given scientifically proven things that help us release more feel-good hormones, lower those stress levels, and help manage our overall stress all the time. So this is what we're aiming for today. So if we go on to the next slide, the few topics, obviously, we're going to kind of hit our exercise, nutrition, and wellness and lifestyle. Now, let's kind of wrap up um, touching on a final few points here. So if we jump to the exercise slide, so ways exercise can lower stress. I've kind of talked about this already, but the re the release of endorphins. Endorphins are one of our feel-good hormones, and the release of these endorphins can be given through exercise. They can also um, get released within things that just make you happy. So like if you really enjoy reading or you really enjoy um, hanging out with like a certain animal or a puppy that you have, stuff like that, not necessarily endorphins get released, but you get some releases of serotonin, another feel-good hormone that just kind of overall helps improve and stabilize the mood and brings down the stress levels for one. Um, and then we have um, how exercise can help prevent or reduce long-term health issues and problems that can kind of play into effect if you uh, obviously take the time to exercise stress for one, will be diminished quite significant, significantly or reduced significantly. So you really want to focus on kind of just spending and having some time, at least 20 minutes a day of getting some form of exercise in. Even if you feel like it doesn't help with your stress levels, it's beneficial regardless of stress. Um, so when stress affects, affects the brain, the rest of the body feels impacted as well. So again, if you are exercising or doing other physical activities to produce these endorphins and, um, you know, helping to exercise in the long run too, it's going to help reduce those cardiovascular metabolic diseases, um, prevent some kidney problems or related diseases along the way. It definitely helps in reducing fatigue. It improves your alertness and concentration again and overall cognitive function, um, which you can kind of see on these slides as well. So this is another statistic that I wanted to throw in here, especially on this exercise slide, is there have been quite a few scientists that have found that regular participation in aerobic exercise has been shown to decrease overall levels of tension, elevate and stabilize the mood, improve our overall sleep, and improve our overall self-esteem as well. So like I said, even 20 minutes of aerobic exercise can stimulate the anti-anxiety effects that come with stress on the body. Another point that I want to put on here is reduces inflammation. This goes back to when we were talking about the fast-acting and slow-acting pathways. Within both of those, um, digestion can get affected. So like the fast-acting pathway, you have slower digestion. Um, but over time, in the slow acting pathway, the more digestion or yeah, digestive issues can um, arise following, you know, so much levels of cortisol or stress in the body. So exercise can help reduce that inflammation um, around the stomach or in the stomach area. And I'm going to kind of hit on that a little bit more too once we go in and talk about nutrition, which we can jump into right now. So ways nutrition can lower stress and how um, stress and nutrition kind of coincide with one another here. I want to touch on a point that kind of related back to that one slide of the different types of pathways again. A big thing is chronic stress lowers the level of the feel-good hormones. One example, the serotonin, which is our overall feel-good hormone. Um, Relating this to nutrition, people, because their stress levels are so kind of high in a sense where people want to get the serotonin feel-good hormone, a lot of people turn to food to help them achieve that feel-good hormone, which can result in obviously people 
gravitating towards those high sugary processed fatty foods and sweets. So they feel like they can keep their stress lower because of that. But the thing is, is maybe they would be less likely to binge or mindlessly eat those foods because their serotonin levels weren't compromised in a sense. So don't always turn to food and binge eat to get that feeling of serotonin in your body to make you feel good. The thing is, is with nutrition and starting a healthy lifestyle, you want to have everything in moderation. There's no sense of cutting out anything sweet wise or highly processed. They're just to be mindful in having it in moderation or at times when you really want to reward yourself. But don't just mindlessly eat this because, again, you might get that initial release of serotonin, but then after the fact, you might feel like, oh, this was really bad for me to eat all of this. Now I feel guilty and blah, blah, blah. We don't necessarily want you to feel that way then. So just have everything in moderation. You don't have to completely cut out or take out anything in a diet. It's just moderation is key. Um, another big thing that I want to hit on with nutrition and stress is um, talking about the chronic inflammation. So if our bodies are chronically overstressed, our, digest our digestive system doesn't work properly, which inhibits our bodies to break down our food correctly. And there may be issues with our bodies uptaking nutrients properly. So this kind of happens... Um, even though they may be eating nutritious foods as well. If our bodies cannot digest it right, then we aren't benefiting from those foods like we normally would in a stressed, in a less stressed state. So a big thing with that is even when you can eat healthy sometimes too, if your body is really high on those stress levels and say, I'm really stressed, but I know how to eat and I want to eat an apple, sometimes too much stress within the body too, even though you're eating really nutritious whole foods, sometimes that can still get affected um, because you still have too, many, too much high levels of cortisol being released in the body, which can still affect our, our digestive system, even though we are eating healthy. So it kind of comes back to finding ways to cope with stress on a different hand too, instead of just turning to food. And even though you are eating healthy, you still have to realize that there that isn't going to change the levels of cortisol being released in the body. We have to find other coping mechanisms to help lower stress as well. So um, let's talk about how nutrition can lower stress. Um, sometimes having too much caffeine and um, just too much energy within the body in that sense can be not beneficial either because again it's releasing high levels of um our fight or flight hormones which again affects our stress levels that is being produced sometimes too much caffeine isn't always a good thing so i'm not saying to limit it or or i shouldn't say that i shouldn't say to completely take it out but just find ways to limit your caffeine intake complex carbs Start eating more complex carbs within your diet. They help you feel balanced and they'll help stabilize those blood sugar levels because they take a little bit longer to get digested in our um, gut. So turning to foods that are more complex in that sense. Foods high in vitamin B, particularly vitamin B12, um, that helps with our metabolism of cortisol. So having more vitamin B12 within the body will help break cortisol down more. Um, foods high in omega-3s, those fatty acids, that will help reduce the inflammation. And then, of course, magnesium-rich foods. Um, and a lot of these you, you can also take in like supplements if you feel like you want to do it that way. But I recommend, you know, trying to find foods that supply these more so just because they're coming from foods rather than a supplement itself. But magnesium will help relax the body and the mind, making you feel more calm. Um, sometimes people, or most people usually take this at night. Like I've definitely taken magnesium at night because it helps me sleep better. Um, and then it also will help reduce, reduce inflammation and also maintain um, those levels of cortisol within the body. And for one, this is a big thing too. A lot of people feel like they have to skip meals 
because of just weight loss in general or they feel too stressed to eat or don't feel like they have to eat, don't ever skip meals because that's not beneficial either. And moving on to our last topic here, wellness and lifestyle, because I don't want to keep you on for too much longer. These are just kind of some ways to lower stress within your everyday life. Getting at least those seven to eight hours of sleep. Improved sleep will help improve the levels of stress throughout the body as well. Take on meditation, the belly breathing practices, the deep breathing techniques, things that you may be doing within the challenge. And a big thing here, this is just kind of a reminder that goes hand in hand with nutrition, but don't rely on food to de-stress. And I kind of talked about those points as well. <clears throat> Turning to food may feel good in the moment and release those feel-good hormones, but you might be affected later when you feel like sluggish or fatigued or just tired because you ate too much in that time of binge eating. So just be mindful of that again or surround yourself with whole nutritious foods in the moment so you feel like you are snacking on something that's a little bit ben more beneficial for you. But <clears throat> just keep in mind to not always turn to food to get those feel-good hormones. Try reading books, getting creative, spending time with friends and family, making that a priority. Um, you know, just setting scheduled time to hang out with others as well. Um, sometimes just being surrounded by the group atmosphere is a feel-good hormone in itself. So just practice other forms of self-care that make you happy and that you know that you enjoy. So even if that's listening to music or spending time baking, spending time cleaning. I, this may sound ridiculous, but cleaning for me definitely is very therapeutic and it helps lower my stress. Lighting some candles, taking a bath, going out and getting your hair and nails done, things like that that just bring you joy and happiness and make you feel relaxed in that moment and state are things that should be incorporated into your lifestyle in general to make you feel good in a sense where you don't need to rely on something else to make you feel good, but it's things that you do truly enjoy doing. Um, final points to kind of wrap up here because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just remember when you're going throughout this challenge and then taking hopefully what you learned throughout the challenge out into real life again and taking this hopefully, and building upon it on your own. Um, just keep in mind that finding ways to lower stress is important. So whether it that be exercising in some form, finding ways to add different nutrients and foods to help lower um, stress levels and finding other things of self-care practices in your everyday life Find those things outside of a challenge and continue to grow upon those habits outside of the challenge to hopefully help you see how it can manage your stress. Journaling. I mean, I can go on and on about stress, but finding ways to lower your stress that make you feel like you are relaxed in that state of mind and you are feeling better please continue to do those outside of the challenge because in the long run, it's going to help hopefully create that habit, let making it stick, but also seeing that in the long run, as you get older, that you have found ways to cope with that stress and you're not going to see those long-term effects cardiovascularly um, within your gut as well, or within your kidneys or just in the overall cognitive function of your brain. Hopefully these practices will continue in the long run to help you prevent from the development of ongoing stress-related diseases or problems um, in the future. So thank you again for joining me and participating. Um, I will have the quiz down below in this email as well for you to take. It's only going to be a few questions. But thank you again for participating and hopefully you learned a little bit of something. I know I kind of rambled um, on in a few parts, but hopefully you did find some takeaways. And um, thank you again for joining me and good luck with the rest of the challenge, everyone.